Hello and welcome back. So in, in the last video we talked about the importance of getting a yes or a no decision on the call and we kind of touched on that a little bit but in this video I want to go into that in just a little bit more detail so we can really understand why we do that and by doing that not just are we going to get better results for ourselves but we're actually serving our clients at a much much higher level and if you remember as we talked about earlier on this week money follows service so the higher we can the higher the level we can serve our clients at the more money we're going to make and actually by putting them in a position where they have to make a decision we're actually serving the client at a much much higher level so not only are we going to get them the better result not only are we serving them at a higher level we're actually also going to make a whole lot more money doing it at the same time so I want to go in that into that just a little bit more in this video so you can really understand why we do that and the benefit not just to us but really the benefit that comes to the client when we do that so as I say I want to talk about why it's important that we actually get the decision on the call and the first reason is that the prospect is never going to be in a better emotional place to make a decision than they are right now at that point in the call. You've got to the end of the call or we're getting close to the end of the call and they've just discussed all of their problems, all of their concerns, all of the difficulties. They've just told you why, where they want to go and they've just told you why they can't get there and they've asked all the questions that they, they can possibly ask about your service and if they're not ready to make a decision at that point then what is going to come to light? off the call after the call that they haven't seen already right so if they can't make a decision now when they're in the optimal position to make a decision when they're in the best emotional state to make a decision then it's extremely unlikely that they're going to make a decision later and a lot of people say to me that people some people just don't make a decision on a call they just that's just who they are right and that's true there are going to be some people that do need to think about it but here's the deal right we can't please all of the people all of the time we've got to we've got to go with the numbers here and we've got to go with the highest probability action so the highest probability is that if you let somebody off of a call without making a decision they're gone they're not coming back and they're not going to make a decision for you so maybe one in ten will come back right you let off the call without making a decision where you might be able to get three of those ten to make a decision by giving some incentive to make the decision on the call because it's like this right if you give somebody the option not to spend money even if they plan on spending it they're going to take that option right if they know they have to spend it even if they know they have to spend it they're not going to spend it if you give them the option not to because there's a certain amount of pain involved think about it like if you've got a cracked windshield or something like that you know you're gonna to have to spend the money you know you're gonna to have to get it fixed but if you can defer that decision down the road you're going to and even though you know you've got to make the decision and pay the money you still put it off but if somebody came along and said look you're gonna to have to get your windshield fixed at some point so that's gonna cost you two hundred dollars if you do it today then I'll do it for a hundred dollars it's gonna put you gonna make that decision a lot quicker and it's gonna help you and it's doing that person's doing you a favor because you could be driving down the road and that wind, windshield can just shatter right so by that person helping you make that decision that you have to make they they may well have just saved your life or saved somebody else's life they've served you at a very high level so when you do this as I say you are gonna hear more no's make no make no mistake about that you're definitely gonna hear more no's most people are gonna say no when you put them in a position to where they have to make a decision but you're also gonna hear more yeses as well right if you're not hearing no's you're not hearing yeses if all you're hearing is maybes and I need to think about it and I'll get back to you next week and I want to do this but I'm not willing I'm not ready to start until two months from now or three months from now or whatever you know you're not hearing no's but you're not hearing yeses either right so if you want to hear more yeses then the key to that is you've got to hear more no's and we've just really talked in some length about how you do that so if you don't do this then like I say you're gonna hear a lot of maybes that never come through and as I said in the previous video a lot of people are getting to the point already where they're getting a lot of consultations they're getting a lot of interest and you're just gonna really get bogged down with this stuff if you're having consultations if you're having say five consultations a week and you're getting five maybes it's like and you're gonna follow that up and keep track of that it's like it really is a nightmare it's gonna slow you down and you're just not helping yourself and you're not helping anybody else it's gonna it's gonna make your difficult your business very difficult to manage and you're not really helping anybody either by doing that so when you force the decision and we'll call it forcing a decision it's not really forcing it we're given an incentive to make a fast decision you're actually serving the client at a much much higher level and let me explain to you 
why that is is because until they actually make a decision the, the, the prospects the client is focused on all of the wrong things right they're focused on what can go wrong they're focused on the risk they're focused on the negativity they, they're focused on a lot of stuff and whatever wherever any wherever focus goes energy flows right so if they're focused on all the negativity and the risk and the potential loss then that's what they're going to grow in their business and and that's not what they want so it's partly your job as their trusted advisor to help them through this decision process the decision to say yes is a difficult decision for people right they've got to invest quite a lot of money into somebody that they don't know that really they've only had it 45 minutes maybe an hour on the phone with and they're getting ready to write a check for a decent amount of money but we know that it's the right thing for them to do, right? We know that it's the right thing for them to write that check because A, until they until they do that, they're focused on all of the wrong things. They're focused on the negativity, they're focused on risk, they're focused on loss, they're focused on what if this doesn't work, what if it goes wrong. But the second they pay that invoice, then their focus shifts to how do I make this work? What do we need to do? What's my next step? Do you see how it shifts from negativity and, and things that are not going to work and the second that invoice is paid their entire focus shifts on how do we make this work how do we move forward so whatever's measured improves right whatever you measure improves and before they make the decision they're measuring the cost they're measuring the risk they're measuring all of these things that we don't want those things to grow in their business and as their advisor as the consultant as the person that's going to help them grow their business we've got to help them get through that decision to get to the other side to where now they're measuring improvement, they're measuring growth, they're measuring the number of leads coming in, they're measuring increased revenue, so on and so forth. So so we've not got to give them the opportunity to where they can really get bogged down in the weeds and make a bad decision. And by not putting them in a position where they absolutely have to make a decision, that is exactly what we're doing, right? We're, we're allowing the client to stay in a situation that isn't the best thing for them. It's going to prevent them moving forward, it's going to get them focused on the wrong things and as I say, as their trusted advisor, as their consultant, as their service provider, it's our job to help them through this decision to get to where we can help them grow their business and part of the reason they haven't grown their business so far is because they're unable to make decisions, because they're unable to be decisive, because they're unable to take action, right? So it's not just about us bringing a service to them, whether it be AdWords or SEO or Facebook or any number of services you want to talk about, right? That That's not the only thing that's going to get them the growth. We've got to get them through the other difficulties that have stopped the growth up to that point. And one of those difficulties is their inability to make a decision and their inability to take action. And by putting them in a position where we really incentivize that decision, we're really, that's the first step for them getting growth, right? That's the first step for them to move forward. So by us doing that, we're actually serving that client at a much, much higher level. That you're giving them what they need to move forward at that point and that's service and as a result as we've said as I've said and as I'll say again money follows servitude money follows service so people that say I'm not willing to do that to my client I'm not willing to put a pr prospective client into that situation well that's fine that's your choice but you gotta understand that you're really not serving the client at a very high level by doing that you, you're allowing them to stay where they are when they've just spent an hour telling you that they want to move forward, right? So your job is to help them move forward and the first step in that is getting them through the decision process and getting them through the invoice. So that's really it. So I don't, I don't want to expound on that too much. I just want to explain why we're doing our clients a service by incentivizing that decision to move forward. I wouldn't even call it forcing the decision, but by incentivizing that decision to move forward and how we're serving ourselves and how we're serving our clients and how everybody is going to benefit from that. And if nothing else, then there's a certain amount of beauty that exists in clarity, right? And I've been in a situation many times myself, and I'm sure many people that are listening to this and watching this right now can relate to where we've just had a pipeline full of just trash that's never going to turn to anything and we just think we're going to make a million dollars and actually all we do is we end up making absolutely nothing we just have a bunch of headaches and a bunch of stress right so we got to be ruthless with the pipeline we don't want a bunch of people in there that don't know what they want right so personally I like people that make decisions that move forward that's my ideal client so you know a we're calling out to the right person by doing this we want to work with decision makers, we want to work with decisive people because these are the guys that get results and our business is all about results, right? we got to get results and 
in order to do that it's not just what we're doing it's what they're doing as well so if that person on the other end of the service that we're delivering is happy to remain in a state of confusion and they move away from clarity then we're not really going to get them the results anyway are we they're not really in a position to move forward so that's it that's it for this call in the next video we're going to talk about actually locking the deal down once we get a yes when somebody says yes i want to move forward then again we want to be swift and efficient in locking that down because if we don't if we don't get them through that process where they actually process the invoice then they're still focused on all of the wrong things and they're still bogged down in the weeds at that point and the chances of them changing their mind and making a bad decision is very very high right i'd say it's at least 50 percent so we want to serve our clients at the highest level by getting them through that part of the business growth process so the quicker we can get them to process that invoice and the quicker we can get that deal locked down again that's serving them at the very highest level and when we serve at the highest level that means we get paid at the highest level and you're going to see the results in your bank account very quickly when you do this stuff as well so that's it i'll see you in the next video take see you there hello and welcome back so now we're going to look at locking our deal down and making sure that we get paid properly so we're at the point where somebody has said yes on the call right they've said yes to us they want to move forward with our service and we need to lock this down so if you don't lock this deal down properly at this point and if you don't do it while you're on the call then I would say probably in my experience at least 50% of your yeses are never going to pay you they're just simply saying yes because they want to get off the phone and they've got no intention of moving forward or you're going to leave it in such a, such a way that they're going to change their mind in the next few days and you just won't hear from them again, right? So we got to lock this down. You simply must lock the deal down while you're still on the course. So here's how you do this. At least here's how I do it. This is what works for me and this is what I really recommend. So before we go into this, you've got to be strong when you do this, right? If, you, if you're if uncomfortable with this and you're happy to kind of leave it up in the air, then you know that's fine whatever but you're going to leave a whole bunch of money on the table right so this is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do like I say you've got to be strong but again as we talked about in the previous video this is how we're going to serve our clients at the highest level we got to get them through this process we got to get them through the decision and we got to get them through the invoice and until we do this our work here is not done so the way we lock the deal down is the first thing is we've got to absolutely 100% make sure that all of their questions are answered, right? So you've got to ask a lot of times, do you have any more questions? Are you sure you don't have any questions? Is there anything that's concerning you? Is there anything niggling in the back of your mind? And I call this like door handle syndrome, right? So what typically will happen is when somebody goes to the doctor, if they've got a major concern, they'll go to the doctor and they'll say, oh, doctor, I've got this, uh, this cough or this problem with whatever right and the doctor will prescribe them something and they have a little conversation and the doctor says is that it anything else i can help you with and the patient will say no no that's it I, i'm happy if you've given me a prescription all is good okay see you next time then so the patient, the patient will walk out put his hand on the door and say oh there was one other thing and now this is what the patient was at the doctor's for right this is why i was here he goes oh yeah i've got this uh, i've got this lump in my leg that i don't know what it is i almost forgot about it is there any chance you could take a quick look at it right that's why they're there. So the same is true with people that we're dealing with. I call it door handle syndrome. They're not going to give their real concerns until the very end, right? So we've got to make sure that we're getting out because all objections must be handled. If they're not, if there's any niggly concerns whatsoever, if there's any unanswered questions going on in the back of their mind, then guess what? They're, you're not going to lock it down. They're not going to pay the invoice and it's just going to turn into another disappointing experience, right? So... The second thing, once you've got all of the questions answered and you just want to keep asking that question quite a few times, right, is you ask the question in a different way. So I ask the question like this, is there any reason you change your mind? So I say, is that it? Do you have any more questions? Are you sure there's nothing nothing going on there? No questions in the back of your mind that you've forgotten that you'd like to ask me? This is your opportunity. And say, no, 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 everything's fine. I, I think it's all good. I think I'm happy. And then I say, okay, great. So let me ask you one more question. Is there any reason you change your mind, Dave? Is there any reason you change your mind, David? And this is where it's going to come out, right? So that might say something like, um, yeah, well, the only reason I might change my mind is if. I don't think I would change my mind, but the only thing that might cause me to change my mind would be, right? So this is the door handle syndrome. This is the door handle. So this is how we get this out. We've got to address this. If we don't address this, then we're just not getting any, we're just not getting paid. That's all there is to it, right? So you've got to ask that question. Is there any reason you change your mind? So we're also 
enacting the commitment and consistency principle here as well once somebody makes a solid commitment to it so if they've just said yes but their questions have not all been answered then in their mind they, they've still got a way out right they, they've got a way out of the commitment that they've made but if you ask the question very very specifically is there any reason you change your mind then that person isn't really going to want to change their mind after they've made that commitment to you and you will get people at this point and say yeah there's reasons I would change my mind right and why is that because they've still got questions so don't assume just because all of the questions or they're telling you all of the questions have been answered they're all answered that just isn't the case and this question is there any reason you change your mind that's going to help uncover that right so the next thing you want to do once you've gone through that once they say no nope, um, I'm happy no reason I changed my mind you got to get a schedule of events in place right so I'd say here's what's going to happen next here's what, what I'm going to do I'm going to do this this and this I'll do this Monday this Tuesday this Wednesday I need you to do this Thursday this Friday this the following Monday is there any reason you wouldn't be able to do that so again you want to you want to get them to committing to future events right and you want to get that commitment on the call so I would even go as far as scheduling another call with them at that point. If they've said yes, I would. I, I generally like to schedule a second call and say, okay, so let's have a let's have a second call in three or four days to see where we are. Have you, if you've got your diary handy with you, yep. Okay, well let's schedule that in right now. Or I tell you what, I'll just shoot my booking calendar over to you. You pick a convenient time in the next week and let's have a call. Right? You want to get them to commit to another action down the road. If they just say, oh, I'm too busy, this week's not good, maybe next week, maybe the following week, then they're not very committed, right? And this is where we start to uncover this, and this is where we need to address it. If they're not willing to commit to the next steps, we know we've got problems and we've still got work to do before the deal's done. So, here's what's going to happen next, is what I say. So, the next thing you want to do is you want to send them an invoice right now and you want to ask them for payment right so at that point when all of the questions have been answered when they say yes there's no reason I change or no there's no reason I change my mind yes I'm happy to commit to a schedule yes I've got a call booked in then I say are you happy for me to send the invoice over to you now this is the email address I've got is this the best email address and they'll say yes or no they'll say whatever they say at that point usually they say yes that's the best email address so I say well while you're on the phone let me just send this invoice over to you very quickly that way I know you've got it I know you've received it and it doesn't get lost or something like that and if they say no don't don't send the invoice right now then you got to find out why because you will get people that say no right people say no don't hold up hold off on the invoice if you could send that to me tomorrow or the next day or at some undefined point in the future is the worst case scenario and you got to find out why they don't want you to send them the invoice now. So if it's a legitimate reason, then you need to ask when you can expect payment. Now these are all reasonable things, right? We're offering, we're professionals. We're offering a service. It's like you wouldn't go to a car dealership and tell them that you want to buy a car without expecting to negotiate payment terms, right? When can we expect payment? So on and so forth. What's the payment schedule? How often do we pay? How soon can we expect payment? What terms are offered? It's like these are legitimate parts of a business deal. So don't be afraid of these a lot of people won't do this because they're afraid that if they start asking for payment then the person's going to change their mind well who cares to be honest if you ask for payment and they change their mind well good riddance to that person what kind of client do you want that changes their mind as soon as you ask for money right so it's reasonable for you to negotiate payment terms and payment details on the call that's a reasonable step and basically we're also teaching the client how to respond to us here so we're teaching them that we're not sloppy with money we're not sloppy with invoices we're not sloppy with payments we're going to expect to be paid and we're going to expect to be paid on time and again this is as much a disqualifier as a qualifier if people have problems at this point with this and they're, they're getting you know flaky on you then let them get flaky that's fine they, they, it's better that you know now than you waste three weeks or four weeks of your life messing with these people and find out at a later date they're never going to pay you anything right so if it's a legitimate reason that they don't want you to send the invoice now then you've got to ask them okay well when can we when can I expect payment and you've got to agree on that right you've got to agree on a time so if the reason is questionable why they won't pay now why they won't receive an invoice now or why they won't agree on a time then again it's most likely it's because they still have objections that need to be handled the deal isn't closed yet if they had no objections and they were happy to move forward then pretty much they would be ready to 
resolve the invoice at this point. So if you're getting very questionable reasons as to why they can't do it, then that's an indication that we need to go back into the sales process and uncover some more objections that, that are still lurking there beneath the surface. Because unless you deal with this, you're not getting paid anyway, right? If, if you let them off the call and say, oh, okay, that's fine, just pay me whatever. Let me know when you're ready for the invoice. I'll send it over whenever. Well, you know, you're just wasting your time. It's like we're not in business at that point. We're play. We're in make believe land, right? We're in pretend business land. We're pretending we're getting clients and we're pretending we're making making money when actually all we're doing is they're wasting our time and we're wasting their time. So the next stage is if they can't pay in full now, then I ask for a deposit, right? I say, well, okay, that's fine, because there are le legitimate reasons, particularly when you're dealing with businesses where they have their own systems in place and their own accounting systems in place to where they can't pay you the full amount today. So it might be, say, if it's a decent client, it might be $3,000 that's due today or something like that. So they might say, well, actually, we do our payment runs on the first of the month. We pay our suppliers on the first of the month. So we can't do anything until the first of the month, right? And that's legitimate. You've got to find out. That's what I'm saying. You've got to ask if there's a legitimate reason. And if there is, then we've got to work around that. So if that's the case, then I say, that, well, to, to secure the waiving of the setup fee, then that's a take action today bonus. And that can be done with even a very small deposit. And usually I'll, I'll get $100 or 50 to anything, really. It doesn't matter, right? Because if they won't pay even a $100 deposit right now while they're on the phone, then they most likely have absolutely no intention of ever paying, right? So I'll get people that I talk to and I'll say, okay, it's X amount of money. So yeah, definitely, I'm in 100%. Okay, well, is it right if I send the invoice over to you right now? Can we process that now? Is there any reason you wouldn't want to do that? No, 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 I can't I can't process that invoice now. No, 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 That that's we'll do that uh, in six months from now, right? Some ridiculous number. So I say, okay, that that's fine, but in order to in order to secure the discount, then that was for a decision today, and a decision has to be backed up with action. So, would you be willing to pay a small deposit to secure that discount? And if they say no at that point, I say you, they say no, I can't, I can't do it. We don't handle that stuff until the beginning of the month, and if that was two days ago, then I say well, you wouldn't you wouldn't be willing to even put a fifty dollar deposit on your own personal credit card that's refundable to you. So I'll offer them that. I say it's a 100% refundable deposit. It's only $50. Put it on your personal credit card. And as soon as the main invoice is, is processed, I'll refund that back to you. You don't have to do anything. All I need to do is send you over the invoice for $50. Just sort that out right now. And that's going to secure your discount. If they won't do that, and a lot, a lot of people won't do that at this point, then you just need to move on, right? They've got no intention of paying. There's... There are legitimate reasons for people not processing the entire invoice in one go. There's absolutely no legitimate reason for them not to pay a $50 deposit or a $100 deposit just to show you that they're actually serious. And how do we know that they're serious? It's going to come down to the credit card, right? The only thing that separates time wasters from, from people that are taking action is the credit card. That's how we know. So if they're not willing to do that, don't mess with them. Save your time. And like I say, don't be afraid to ask for this stuff. You've got to be strong. So... You want to get some kind of financial commitment from them, no matter how small. It doesn't matter, right? There's the difference between a $50 deposit and the difference between no deposit at all is a million dollars, right? It's massive. Somebody that was not willing to put down $50 just isn't a serious prospect. And yeah, we either need to go back into the process and find out what objections they've got, or we just need to end the call at that point and say, well, look, if you're not prepared to even put down a very small deposit, then we can't really move forward at this at this point. We haven't really got a deal. And like I say, detach. Detach from the outcome. Be prepared to walk away from it. You need walk away. You need walk away power. That's what's going to really fuel your business. So next thing, if you've asked for a deposit, if they've given you the deposit or they've made a payment or whatever, then step number six is don't be in a hurry to get off the phone with them. Like They've just made a pretty good decision, a pretty big decision, right? So they may have just sent you five thousand dollars, or you know, more even possibly. I mean, I you know, I've got people that are charging seven and a half thousand dollars up front and getting it right. So they may have just sent you seven and a half thousand, ten thousand dollars. Who knows? Could be an awful lot of money. So at the end of the day, they don't really know who you are. They don't really know you. So what can happen if you rush off the phone? 
it seems like you've got their money now you've just disappeared and they go what did I just do I just gave ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or three thousand dollars to a complete stranger I want my money back and they panic right and if you rush off the phone you're gonna get chargebacks on your credit card that's all there is to it right so you wanna sit there you wanna stay on the phone with them for as long as they're willing to stay on the phone with you basically to reassure them that you're not going anywhere you're a real person it's not just about getting their money and running off and you know the way the way you can do that is to reassure them that they've made a good decision uh, you start to put the next steps in place you talk about the follow-up which is step number seven we follow up immediately right we start to put a plan of action in place uh, again when we follow up with the email we we reassure them and remind them in the email that they've made a good decision it's a good investment they're in safe hands you're not going to let them down you're a real person who can be found <clears throat> and you remind them that this is a good decision that they've made right we want to really make sure that that they feel reassured that they've made a good decision basically so like I say if you can't get any commitment on the call then you know that they're really not very serious and they probably won't pay you in the future if they're not willing to make any kind of financial commitment or they're not really willing to lock anything down then you know that it's probably somebody that it's just easier for them to say yes and never call you again than it is to say no some people just don't like to say no right they got a phobia about saying no or something like that so be strong lock it down is my advice because you'll get a lot of people that are serious legitimate prospects that have seriously said yes but if you don't lock the deal down and you don't get them to the other side then they're going to change their mind because like I've said and I'll say it again because it's very very important until they process that invoice they're focused on the risk they're focused on the danger they're focused on the loss and they're fear driven at this point it's fear that's driving them forward once they cross the line and pay the invoice then it's optimism and it's hope and it's faith and it's the promise of a better future that's driving them forward so we want to get them out of that state of fear as quickly as we possibly can and get them into a place of hope and optimism and hope of a better future right the quicker we can do that the better it is for the client and the better it is for us that's just serving everybody at the very highest level so be strong, lock it down, or else you're just going to leave a lot of money on the table. At least 50% of your sales are going to turn into no's. You know, at least this way, by being strong, you know if it's a sale or not. You know how much money you're getting paid because you just collected it, right? So you got at least you're dealing with facts. So having said that, now we've got the deal locked down and they're willing to pay. Let's talk very quickly about how you get paid now again this is entirely up to you if you've got processes that work don't let me talk you out of it this is just what I do and this is really for the benefit of people that are really not that clear on how to get paid or really don't know how to get paid properly so this is this is for the benefit of those people if you know if you're getting paid efficiently if you've got payment processes if you've got whatever it is that, that that's working for you by all means keep using it I'm not saying this is the right way this is just a way this is just one way there are many ways so this is for the benefit of people that are looking for help with how to receive payments so the way what I use is I use two things really so obviously I just use a bank account so people have the option of just if they want to they can just transfer money into a bank account your bank transfer that's obvious but I like PayPal and I like Stripe as my payment process and so I use both both are free pretty much so I think PayPal merchant account might be like 50 bucks a month something like that but uh, with all of these start if you want to use PayPal start early start the paperwork early because they can be a bit of a pain in the behind and I've lost quite a lot of money from PayPal where they haven't really processed payments properly where I hadn't had the paperwork filled out so uh, I've had some big sales that have fallen through just because PayPal didn't process the payment and the person that was making the payment got cold feet and it's cost me literally tens of thousands of dollars so if you're going to use PayPal set that up now find out what you need to do to be compliant with them to meet their compliance guidelines provide them all the paperwork that you need for a merchant account and make sure it's legitimate and above board once you've done that PayPal is great really easy everybody's got a PayPal account people are willing to pay they trust PayPal and and it's, it's really good once you set up the other one is Stripe I like Stripe I think it's free My, it doesn't cost me anything I don't think uh, and that allows me to pro process like Discover, Master, Visa, American Express, stuff like that as well. So it just gives people a different option. So 
the way I pull that all together is with a software called invoice.com and you can see the URL on the screen there and all that is is it just makes it super easy for me to send an invoice to somebody right it makes it easy for my clients to pay which is exactly what you want to do if, if there's any friction around the payment you're going to lose sales if you send an invoice over or, or however you do it and it doesn't go through it doesn't go through it doesn't go through then people get jumpy they start to think you're not legitimate right so uh, if there's any danger of it not going through and there is sometimes if it's a bigger if it's a bigger payment you might want to tell them look seeing as it's a larger transaction seeing as it's a cross-state transaction or an international transaction there's a good possibility that your bank is going to deny this so if if you put it through and the bank denies it you just need to call them up and tell them it's a legitimate transaction that's all it is it's just because it's a it's a fairly decent transaction and it's cross borders that's why it's being denied that's the only thing so you want to tell them that up front so they know that if their payment is rejected it's not because you're a con man and your merchant account account has been frozen it's because it's a cross border transaction and that's all there is to it so I like invoice just because it gives lots of payment options to the client you, they can pay it with their bank account, they can pay it with the credit card, they can pay it with uh, PayPal, I think there's even an option where they can pay it with Bitcoin if they want to on there, so that's all integrated for you, and it just makes it really nice and really easy, right, you can also set up reoccurring billing very, very easy with them, so let's just shoot over there quickly and have a look at it so you can see exactly what it is, right, so here we are, and you know, there's not a huge amount to look at here, it's invoice.com, and as you can see, it's uh, modern invoicing and subscription billing, it's just really nice, it integrates your PayPal account, and your Bitcoin account, and your bank account, and your Stripe account into one invoice, and just makes it really easy, pretty much, I think everybody who's watching this video will have will have paid through, through invoice.com when I sent you the invoice for this, so you're all very familiar with it and you can see how it is. It's really relatively inexpensive as well for what it is. I think it's like, yeah, a startup is like $29 a month and it's really, that's nothing for what it is. So again, entirely up to you. Feel free to use it. Feel free not to use it. It really is up to you, but I like it. That's the solution that I use. And if anybody's looking for a payment solution, it's a good one. It's a legitimate one, right? So let's head on back quickly and finish up. So here we are. We're back again. And that's it, really. That's that's all I've got to say about locking the deal down and getting paid. It, you know, Again, if I could summarize it, it's be strong. Be strong. The only reason that you wouldn't lock the deal down is because you're afraid that if you do you'll lose the deal and again it's attachment it's attachment to the sale right and this is backwards counterintuitive inside out what you think works doesn't and what you think is going to kill the sale actually makes the sale right so if you're uncomfortable with the process of locking the deal down like we've just described you've got to ask yourself why is it that you're uncomfortable with it and if the answer is because you think that it's going to force the person to say no then that's an indication that you're attached to the sale right and as we've said the more attached to the sale you are the less likely it is and the further the sale slips from you so keep that in mind and uh, be aware of that if you're a little bit hesitant to implement some of these things but this is what it takes guys I mean this is serious business and this is what it takes to grow a business if you want to have have a serious growing business that's going to produce six figures even seven figures of income then this is what it takes we've got to start to have systems in place we've got to have rules and we've got to be able to stand up for the rules that we put in our business and if a client doesn't buy like we sell then we just move on right we're just completely detached and that's part of being an expert we don't we don't sell how they buy, they buy how we sell, and if they're not prepared to buy how we sell, then it's just not a good match. That's all there is to it. Be unattached to the outcome, walk away from it, and move on to the next. So that's it. In the last video of this week, we're going to look at how to handle uh, somebody asking you for a proposal. I personally loathe sending out proposals. I rarely ever do it. And uh, you're going to hear people ask you for proposals all the time, though. So we're going to look at exactly how to deal with that and how to get around it and how to not send them out. So I'll see you over in the next video. Hello and welcome back. So let's talk very briefly about a proposal. So when people ask you for a proposal, we generally don't want to send one because generally when they ask for a proposal, what it means is it's code language for I'm not very interested and pretty much all a proposal is going to be is a big time suck for us and it's going to end up in not very good results. So 99% of the time when people ask for a proposal, I generally don't send one. So what I do 
if I'm on a call with somebody and they say it sounds great, send me a proposal, what you want to do is actually clarify what they're asking for. So if they're asking for a legal agreement in terms of writing, then that's fine. So if somebody says, oh, sounds good, can you send me a proposal over or send me a proposal, whatever, you know, however they do it, I'll say, okay, well, uh, what, so what exactly are you asking for? I say, are you asking for the terms of what we've just talked about in writing so you have a legal agreement? Or are you just looking for more information? Because if you're just looking for more information, then th that's what this call is for. This is your opportunity to get all of your questions answered. So if there's still questions that you haven't got answered, then this is your opportunity to do that. So if they're basically asking for more information, then as I say, this is what this call is for. So if they don't want to take advantage of that, if they don't want to get the information on this call, then they're really just telling you they're not very interested and they're not really going to move forward. They're happy just to take an hour or two of your time, have you put a proposal together and never hear from you again or you never hear from them again. So if they do insist on a proposal, then I'd use the template below this video. I'll just put a template below this video so you just don't waste any time on it. So just modify it for your own needs because as we've said, every now and again, somebody, they, they will come back occasionally. Most of the time, they don't. So if you can clarify on the call exactly what it's for, like I say, it's just a, would you like to see the terms of what we've just agreed in writing, or are you looking for more information? And then if they continue and they really, really want a proposal, then we just send them out a box standard one that uh, doesn't take hardly any time to put together. That way, we can we can give them something if we really need to but like I say most of the time if we ask that question or if we tell them that that's what this call is for it's to get all of your questions answered then that pretty much most of the time will take care of the problem so that's it really that's how I deal with proposals and like I say just understand that when they're asking for a proposal they're basically telling you they're not very interested so if you let them off the call at that point without uncovering why they're not interested then it's highly highly unlikely that a proposal is going to get them interested right so that's basically how I view proposals and how I save myself a ton of time by not sending them out. So this week has been uh, all about sales. It's far from an exhaustive study on the sales process by any stretch of the imagination and we could spend eight weeks on sales or even longer really. It's a, obviously it's a big study and, and uh, always advise that you can constantly studying sales. It's a very, very important part of your business. So what we've talked about this week certainly will get you the results and it certainly will get you started in the right direction. And if you're already doing well, maybe there's one or two points in there that you can take and you can refine your sales process. So remember, it's really just all about the mindset. If you've got the right mindset, then you're going to do fantastically well and everything else is just kind of you know, icing on the cake, really. You're going to do, you're going to do great if you get your mindset right. So just focus on your mindset and take a few points from this week's training and you're going to do just fine with that stuff. And of course, it's a trial and error process as well. It's a learning experience. So you can always, I like to use Skype for my course. That way I can record the course. I can listen back to them and I can see kind of the cringeworthy moments and I can see the good moments and I can start to evaluate my own performance and improve my own sales process all the time. So that's it. Good work. We'll see you all next week. And uh, don't forget to post your success stories and your results in the Facebook group so we can all see how everybody's doing. I'm starting to see some really good uh, really good case studies in there, some really good results from people. So make, make sure you post in your results so everybody can see how we're all doing. So that's it for this week. Great job and we'll see you next week.